If you're in this room and you partied hard and you drank hard and you ran hard and you, you heathened hard, the Lord is saying, okay, well, at least give me what you gave the devil. At least give me what it was that you did in the world. If you showed up at the party high and tore up, you shouldn't show up here all stuffy and stuck. You should have been listening to worship on the way in here. You, you should have shown up here high and ready to bless his name. You, the, the worship leader should have said boo and you should have been ready to shout. The Lord says, don't do me worse than you did the devil. At, at the least, Give me what you gave the enemy. Ever wonder, how does the word apply to your life? Can it change you? Yes, it can. Word of God can change your life. Just one word from the Lord. That's all you really need. Just one word from Him. I'm so glad you tuned in with us today to hear that just one word from the Lord that can remove all of your doubt, cause the sun to shine, and bless your life. The Word says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. His benefits. You know what benefits are. Benefits is compensation on top of your compensation. It's the extra on top of your payment. That's what we're talking about today. If you've got a good job, it's got some benefits. If you've got the right kind of relationship with the Lord, You've got to realize not only do you get salvation, but there's some benefits there. And you want to make sure that your benefits package is together. Sit tight. We're going to lay it out for you. We're going to lay out all of the benefits that God does not want you to forget. Stay tuned. Everybody say the benefit. The benefit. Say it again, the benefit. Uh, I, I realize, you know, that Paul, uh, David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And we've done that tonight. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. There's benefits to being in this relationship with God. You're, you're getting more than what you bargained for when you come into this relationship with God. And I really wanted to talk about all of the benefits of salvation. But what I, just for a second, I, I felt like, well, Lord, let's just look at what the Apostle Paul is talking about that leads us up to getting to the place of these benefits and you see them there right there in verse 19 and I can just show you these couple things and uh, but but the first thing that you see there in verse number 19 B and and in a sense what, what the Apostle Paul is saying here is that slavery to God there's a benefit to you being a slave to God and so there are these highlights of slavery uh, in the, when it comes to being God's slave or slaves to righteousness which is the heading that you see there in, at the top if you have an NIV Bible like mine. But when you look at verse 19, let, let's, uh, let's look just at a few things. The first thing that, that, that I just want to highlight there, we'll just let the Apostle Paul just speak a little bit. But the first thing is he says, just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to your purity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. So the first thing I want you to see is that, is that, that phrase there, just as, just as. And, 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 and just have an understanding that God expects you to give him at least what you gave the devil. At least what you gave the devil, the Lord is saying, well, just as you offered your body to impurity, just as you were a slave to sin, just as you used to be a heathen, the way you heathened is now, if you heathened hard, so now Christian hard. 
you heathen hard, so now Christian hard. Now, heathen is a word I just made up, but heathen hard. If you're in this room and you partied hard and you drank hard and you ran hard and you, you heathen hard, the Lord is saying, okay, well, at least give me what you gave the devil. At least give me what it was that you did in the world. That's why every now and then we have to have a shouting session like this and we got to dance because if you danced in the world, you sure better dance when you get to God's camp. If you was loud in the world, if you was saying, hey, hey, if you could holler across the street, you certainly can holler now that you, if you used to go to the club and go, whoop, whoop, wait a minute, if you could whoop, whoop, then you ought to be able to holler, you, you ought to praise God. You Don't let the way you were in the world, don't be wild in the world and get all quiet and conservative once you get to the kingdom of God. If you were violent in the world, go ahead and be violent in the kingdom. The kingdom suffered violence and the violent take it by force. If you talk to everybody in the world, don't get quiet once you get to the house of God. If you used to invite everybody to the party, you sure better be inviting everybody to this party. If you were one of the folks that would walk around with them little things that you hand out to the club and hand out and telling folks that how dare you do that for the club? How dare you do that for the house party? If you showed up at the party high and tore up, you shouldn't show up here all stuffy and stuck. You should have been listening to worship on the way in here. You, you should have shown up here high and ready to bless his name. You, the, the worship leader should have said boo and you should have been ready to shout. The Lord says, don't do me worse than you did the devil. At, at the least, give me what you gave the enemy. And so it's an important question for us to ask and that is, are we giving God better than we gave the devil? That's an excellent question. The Apostle Paul is saying, yeah, just, have, just understand that the Lord is saying, well, all right, I'll, I'll tell you what, just as you used to offer your bodies as slaves to impurity and ever-increasing wickedness, wickedness that was getting worse. Can anybody admit that? That it was getting worse. Trouble has a way of getting worse. Sin has a way of getting worse. You start with one thing, you transition to something worse. It just has a way of spiraling out of control. So what he's saying is that just as you used to offer your bodies to slaves and slavery, to the parties and the clubbing and the girls and the, all that, just as you used to be that way, I was talking to a young man the other day and I was saying to him, well, just the way you used to roll on women and pull girls, what you need to do now is you need to use that ability to roll on brothers and pull brothers for the kingdom. Because we need men in the house of God. I'm not saying we don't need women. Women, it's awesome. We're glad you're here. But we, we believe in God for 10,000 men. Let me say it again. I'm believing God for 10,000 men. I'm believing God for world overcomers to be 10,000 men. It's a man's church. And I'm not ashamed to say it. Because when I have 10,000 men, believe me, the women are going to. They're going to be like, girl, where are you going? Girl, I'm going away. 10,000 men, girl, I'm going away. Where, where you think you're going to be? Y'all going to be right up in here. So I'm not worried about losing y'all. It's good for you to come here and see brothers standing and brothers serving and brothers on the camera and brothers in the, brothers in the parking lot. We let women do everything for too long. It's time for us to stop being dogs and be men of God. It's time. Don't shortchange God with what you gave the devil. If you spent money on weed and liquor and parties, you ought to be able to tithe and give it off. You ought to be able to tithe and give if you was given to the, if you was paying the charge to get in the club. Don't, listen, don't come here and give less in here that you, than you gave to get in the club. This is a word for somebody. You had to pay a cover charge to get in that bar. You better pay something. You don't, don't come in here and tap that bucket. You better put something in there. <laughs> Mount of money you used to spend on wickedness. The Lord said, don't do me like that. Don't do me dirty like that. Just as you used to be a heathen, be a slave to God. Be a servant of God. 
That's a word for somebody right there. That, that God actually expects us to worship him better than we were sinners. Then the second thing that you see that I noticed, I want to point out to you, in verse 20 he says, he just reminding you, he says, now when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. That's that there in verse 20. He's talking about, I never really saw this before. I don't read the Bible through so many times, and certainly I've read Romans, and I love the Apostle Paul. When I get to heaven, the Apostle Paul is who I want to meet. I mean, I, I want to see Jesus. But then after that, I'm going to Paul's house. Whose house? Paul's. I'm going to find Paul's mansion, and, and hopefully I'll be in his neighborhood. I'm, I'm, hopefully I will. And, you know, Tupac wondered if heaven has a ghetto. No, it does not. But, but, but what I'm saying is that I, I'm going to find Paul. I love the Apostle Paul, and, and, but as much as I love that, I, I just don't really remember seeing this this, this phrase this way, when you were slaves to sl sin, you were free from the control of righteousness, meaning righteousness is supposed to be in control. What that means is that, and the Lord said this to me, and the Lord spoke all of this to me at about 2 o'clock in the morning. My wife can tell you because she was wondering why I was up with the lights on. And I said, girl, be quiet. God is talking. The Lord will talk when he wants to talk. And you better, better, you better hear when he's talking. <laughs> and when the Lord said to me, he said, when you really have righteousness on when you really have it on it works by itself when you really have righteousness turned on if you really have it on it's it's automatic it, it'll it'll steer the car it'll run your life when you have really have it on it's like cruise control if you could if you take your foot off the gas and, it don't, and the car don't keep on going then you haven't clicked the switch and turned that cruise control on when you really have it on you can take your foot off the gas and your, your car will keep on moving when you really have righteousness turned on it's actually in control meaning that it'll arrest you righteousness will stop you you about you'll be getting ready to do something and righteousness will stop you. He's saying that, see, when you were a slave to sin, what you were is you were free from the control of righteousness. Righteousness was in control. Righteousness was running the show. Righteousness will run your life and bless you. It'll run your life and it'll bless you. And it'll, it'll, righteousness will get so that you'll even kind of have almost an inkling of a desire to want to do wrong and can't do it. Righteousness is on you so strong. That nobody even knows that you did dirt and you feel bad about it. You know you're righteous when you can be righteous when nobody's looking. But what he's saying is, he's saying, I, I want you to get to a point where your righteousness runs it. Where you are actually, when you were a slave to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad for the control of righteousness. I'm glad for the control of righteousness. It's blessing me. Not only is it going to make me get to heaven, but it's blessing me. It's blessing me. Go ahead and let righteousness reign. Go ahead and let the Holy Ghost mess with you. Don't quiet that voice down. Don't, go, don't, 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 don't close off the voice of the Spirit of God telling you, now that wasn't right. Don't get free from the control of righteousness. That's the second thing that I wanted to show you. Then the third thing that you see there in verse 21, he, he asks the question, well, what benefit did you reap at that time from the things you're now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you be, have been set free from sin, you've become slaves to God. And the benefit you reap leads to holiness. And the result is eternal life. And so uh, what he's saying there in verse, 20, in verse 21 and 22 is that you ought to be happy to be stuck with God. You ought to be happy to be stuck with God. I was looking at my wife the other day, and I love my wife, and I was looking at her. But at this point, we've been married going on. 22 years, almost 22 years we've been married, and we figured it out, did the math. We've been in a relationship, we started off as friends, we've been in a relationship together almost 25 years. At this point, we have children together, we got property together, she got all my money, she knows where it all is. At this point, I'm stuck with her. <laughs> She's stuck with me. Really, it's her stuck with me. <laughs> it's not me stuck with her. She's stuck with me at this point. She's stuck with me. But I'm happy to be stuck with her. 
And she's happy to be stuck with me, ain't you, girl? Go ahead and say amen, hallelujah. She's happy to be stuck. Well, in the same way, what the Lord is saying is, well, you ought to be glad to be stuck with God. You ought to be glad to be a slave to God. You ought to be glad. You ought to look back at the things that you, you, you should have logically assessed the situation at this point. You're not doing God any favors by being saved. He did you a favor when he saved you. <laughs> that you ought to look back at what you used to do and how you used to be and feel shame. You shouldn't look back nostalgically at your sin days as if those were the good times. <laughs> you shouldn't think, yeah, I tell you, I was a big pimping back. No, no, that's not how it's supposed to be. You are supposed to look back on those times and say, wow, what did I really get? From that stuff that stuff led to death you know you're in the right place when you don't even like to think about how you used to be you just you feel bad you feel ashamed you feel like you need to call some people and apologize I did that I, 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 I did a little period where I, I felt guilty for the Holy Spirit and I was calling calling all the girls that I, that I did wrong that was, a, that was tough. I'm not telling anybody to do it, but I'm saying that, that, that because, you know, be prepared. <laughs> some folk are going to say, well, praise the Lord, and some folk are going to say, I, oh, no, you aren't. It was, it was a rough night. My point is, is that you ought to look back on what you used to be and think, what did I get from that? Lord, I'll tell you what, I'm, I, I have logically assessed the situation, and Lord, I realized that I'm in a much better place being in a relationship with God. No, nobody has to chase me down and try to make me be saved. I, the, the last thing I would do is leave God at this point. I've done the math. I realized nobody has to beg me or check on me to keep me from doing something dumb. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you tonight? I, every now and then I'll have a conversation with someone that's doing something crazy or dumb or stupid and I'll think to myself, wow, why are you doing that? Don't you know by now that the safest place in all the world is in the center of the will of God? Haven't you figured that out yet? And if you, if you haven't, this is what you need to do. Just go find whatever, whatever heathen family you've got. Anybody got, anybody got heathen family? Uh oh, I got some. I got some heathen family now. But just when I look at where my where my family is without God, versus the long term effect of having God in your life, you would be a straight fool to leave God at this point. Nobody should have to call you 24 hours a day to get you to stay saved. Nobody ought to have to bug you to stay saved. You ought to have logically assessed the situation and realized that the dumbest thing you could ever do is leave God at this point. You don't know where you'd be if it had not been for the Lord on your side. He's not going to leave you. You just make sure you don't leave him. Because, and the last thing I want to show you, and I'll, I'll let you go because I'm out of time. In verse 22, he says, but now that you have been set free from sin and become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. I am finding the path to holiness. I'm going to leave you with that thought. I am finding the path to holiness. I realize that there's a path to holiness. Salvation happens right away. Holiness and sanctification is a process. And you have to find your way there. You have to find your way there. You have to find the path to holiness, and that holiness will leap. You'll reap eternal life as a result of you finding that path to holiness. But you've got to find it. It's a highway to holiness, and you've got to find it. You've got to walk on it. You got to walk on it. All this shouting, all this screaming, all this hollering, all this God making a way, isn't it? It's great. But at the end of it, you better find that path to holiness. <laughs> you be, after all of this, this was wonderful. We had a great time tonight. But after all of this, the, yeah, you, you ought to say, all right, I, I, I got to find the path that's going to lead me to holiness. Because from holiness, I'm going to reap the benefit of eternal life. And, and, and all of this walking with God, it's, it doesn't have the same power if it doesn't lead you to holiness. You ought to be different as a result of it. I said you ought to be different as a result of it. You ought to be changed. 
shouldn't think the same way you used to think. You shouldn't talk the same way you used to talk. You shouldn't go the same places you used to go. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah. Folk ought to get around you and just notice something's different about you. What have you done? What are you doing different? Where, and you ought to be able to say, it's God has saved. God has saved me. God has changed me. I, I don't do what I used to do. I don't say stuff I used to say. I don't think stuff I used to think. I'm changed. I have found the path to holiness. And that holiness, ah, oh, that thing, that's, that's working. Once I found that path to holiness, I got on the road to eternal life. I got on the road to eternal life because eternal life is the goal. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. When you were in the world, <laughs> now the word says that, think about what you were. Think about how you were when you were lost. Think about how you were when you didn't know the Lord. When you were out there in your sin, when you were out there doing your dirt, you got more than you bargained for. <laughs> I'm so glad you came to your senses. I'm so glad that love lifted you, that you got saved that your life was turned around because the wages of that sin was death. You thought you were just having a good time, but actually death was back there. You were getting more than you bargained for. But I'm telling you the truth, now that you're saved, now that you're walking in this relationship with God in salvation, you get more than you bargained for. And that's what we're talking about in this series. We're talking about the benefits. We're talking about the great things I received as a result of my walk with God. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Just being forgiven would be enough for me, actually. Just getting ready to go to heaven, being allowed to go to heaven, that I'm on my way to heaven. I'm rejoicing that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That'd be enough for me. But God being God says, yeah, but I've got more in store for you because I'm the God of more than enough. Your eyes haven't seen, your ears haven't heard, your mind hasn't conceived what God is trying to do for those of us who love him. He's revealing it to us by his spirit. Stay tuned. The announcer is going to tell you how to get this series so that the spirit of God can reveal to you the more, the better, the greater, the benefits that God has for your life. A vibrant, active, and living relationship with God is so rare these days. So many of God's children are struggling just to keep their heads above water. We are missing out on the benefits of a healthy experience with the Lord. Better health, stronger relationships, and a brighter future all come from the benefits of walking with God. Are you missing out? You don't have to. It's time to reclaim your joy, see financial prosperity realized, and your faith grow as you rediscover the benefits of being a child of God. When you really have righteousness turned on, if you really have it on, it's, it's automatic. It, it'll, it'll steer the car. It'll run your life when you have, really have it on. When you really have righteousness turned on, it's actually in control, meaning that it'll arrest you. Your journey to rediscovering all that's yours today starts with Pastor Andy's series, The Benefits, as you listen to each of these four powerful teachings, your life will be transformed forever. You will discover the true significance of your relationship with God. You will be impacted as Pastor Andy walks you through all that is yours through Christ. Love, joy, forgiveness, and total life prosperity. All of this and more. And Pastor Andy walks you through how to access these benefits and make them real in your life every day. You, you ought to say, all right, I I, I've got to find the path that's going to lead me to holiness because from holiness, I'm going to reap the benefit of eternal life. And, and, and all of this walking with God, it's, it doesn't have the same power if it doesn't lead you to holiness. For your generous love gift of just $35, you will receive all four messages in this series. Eternal life, the benefits. Eternal life, more than you bargained for his benefits to me, 
and the extended version of today's message, The Benefits. But that's not all. When you pick up the phone and call right now, you'll also receive one of Pastor Andy's most popular series, Safety in the Standard, absolutely free as his gift to you. This powerful three-disc collection will teach you how to follow the path the Lord has set forth for your life in order to avoid self-destruction and receive all the promises God has in store for you. So, that's two complete series, seven power-packed full-length messages for your love gift of only $35, all delivered in Pastor Andy's humorous style. And not only will you receive the Word, but you will experience the rewards as you sow your seed to this ministry. Every donation goes to reaching people all around the world with the gospel. It's time to find your path so that you can have eternal life through Christ. Don't wait another moment. Call now. I heard a story of a man who booked passage on a boat. The boat was gonna cross the water for several weeks. It would took to get across the water. And when he bought the ticket, he, it was all of his money just to purchase the ticket. And so he went to the supermarket, bought some apples and some cheese. And, and, and every day when the rest of the passengers would go to the dining room, he would just go to his room and eat his apples and cheese and he was okay. And, and his friends would say, hey man, we're going to the dining room. And he'd just make an excuse, hey no man, I've got stuff I gotta do. And he would go to his room and eat his apples and cheese. And finally, about the seventh day of the trip, one of his friends said to him, man, come on, what is it? Yeah, every day we go to the dining room and you leave and go to your room. What, what's going on? And in his embarrassment, he had to confess. He said, man, listen, when I paid for this ticket, I only had money just to buy the ticket. I can't afford to eat with you all in the dining room. And his friend said, oh man, didn't you know that your meals were included in the price of your ticket? You don't want to miss out on all of the stuff that's included in salvation. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. He paid the price. And there are so many benefits that you get in salvation. And you want to make sure that you get your benefits package. Healing, deliverance, prosperity. Bless the Lord, oh my soul forget not all of his benefits. I'm so glad you were with us today. We want to see you next week right here. We're going to share together the power of the truth, the power of the Word of God. If you are ever in the Raleigh-Durham area, come experience Pastor Andy live at World Overcomers Christian Church, located at 2933 South Miami Boulevard in Durham, NC. Here at WOCC, our mission is simple, to empower people to have balanced victory for a God-designed life. Join us on Sundays at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or 12.30 p.m., and on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We want to see you right here at World Overcomers. For more information, visit online at www.wocctrtp.com.